I kept, I kept watching. I said, yeah, they're going to make it again. They're going, oh, shit. Thank you, Dylan. Well, welcome to the LSU portion of our news conference marathon today. Uh, as a courtesy to the other media members, please turn off or silence your cell phones. Uh, please, when we get to the uh, portion where we're asking questions of the coach and players, please give us your name, your affiliation, and to whom you're asking a question. We'll start with a, a comment from Jay and then uh, answer, uh, have questions for the players. Uh, if you're joining in on Zoom, please join. Please use the raise hand function uh, for questions. And we'll address questions in the room first and then uh, get to the questions from Zoom as time permits. And re remember, there's no recording of this press conference on cell phones uh, now. Jay, congratulations for coming back. Give us an overview. Yes, uh, very proud of our team this year. Uh, obviously a great collection of talent, but they became a team. Uh, we were very deliberate in how we did that. We've had great player leadership. And to have the expectations on them uh, to be the number one team in the country preseason, hold that for 11 or 12 weeks and, and not have a losing week the entire season uh, speaks to their consistency and their, their talent. I believe we're playing the best uh, baseball that we have all year right now. And uh, very proud of being here. And uh, with that being said, we're highly motivated to continue our streak of our best baseball right now. And um, can't wait to get on a field. And uh, very proud and very honored to bring this group of players to Omaha. Okay, we're going to start with player uh, questions for the student athletes first. And we'll start up here. And uh, we'll get a mic to you right up here. For Dylan, uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. For Dylan and for Thatcher, you just heard your coach say it. We've all seen it. Why do you think you're playing your best baseball right now? Yeah, I mean, we had a little uh, little team meeting um, right after the SEC tournament, and uh, you know, got together and just, you know, we just said five games. Just give us five games to get here, and uh, play your best baseball that you possibly can. Um, forget about all the stuff that happened in the season. Just. Focus on the present right now. Um, give us five games and to get here, and, and I think everything will kind of just take care of itself as soon as we get here. So um, we got to we got to keep this um, momentum keep uh, forward. And like I said, I think it's just going to take care of itself as soon as we start playing. Thatcher. Yeah, just what just what Dylan said. I think that meeting was was huge for us and a lot of momentum from that. And then just something coach has said all year is just surrendering your, yourself to the result. All about the process and doing whatever we need to do to win. Okay, right here. Matt Tallarini from World Baseball Network. This question is going to be for Thatcher. Uh, Thatcher, how does it feel to be with a new program this year and just all the alignments with your mechanics that you adjusted from with uh, UCLA um, last year? Um, it, I, love being, I love being an LSU Tiger. I love our coaches. love the teammates to death. Uh, some of my closest friends. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a great season we've had. We've loved it. And I feel like I've grown a lot from it. And um, in terms of the adjustments, you just sticking to my process every day and, and really um, staying true to that and um, some results following, and then we're in a good spot now. Okay. Joe. Joe Healy, D1 Baseball. Uh, Thatcher, how rewarding has it been for you to deal with some of the ups and downs you had earlier in the season, to fight your way back into having a prominent role again and, and to be a part of getting this team to this stage? Yeah, I think it's it's been rewarding. Um, you know, with failure, success, I, I stayed true to my process every day with my work, and uh, you know, it feels good to contribute to the team. It obviously, you know, when when you're going out there and you don't feel like you're contributing and letting some of your guys down, it's the, it's the worst feeling in the world. So, it feels really good to kind of contribute, and um, you know, we just I just want to help us win. Okay, Brandon, back here. 
So you guys mentioned that you guys held a team meeting after the SEC tournament, and the result has been a five-game winning streak. However, all of those games were in Baton Rouge. This is obviously not Baton Rouge. So how are you guys planning on keeping that alive, maybe with a little bit less of the familiarity that you have from playing at home? Dylan, you start. Yeah, I mean, just sticking to our our game, really. You know, I think uh, we're in a very good spot right now. Like I said, the momentum is is tremendous in, in this in this team right now. I think everything's just kind of clicking for us right now. Um, bullpen's doing really well. Starting pitching has just been dominant, and uh, our approaches have been great in the uh, batter's box. So, really, just sticking to our plan. No matter you know, change the field, change the atmosphere. Sticking to our plan. That's it. Fetcher. Yeah, I think uh, you know now more than ever, it's all about uh, just staying true to our to ourselves and what's got us here. And um, you know, I think feel like that Dylan said it perfectly. Okay, Sam. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Hey guys, uh, you're familiar with the team you're playing right off the bat. Um, what is it like to play a team yet again uh, that you're very familiar with that also has a really good pitching staff? Thatcher, you start. Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, a lot of the SEC teams, you know, we see them in conference and we see them in the SEC tournament, saw them in the postseason. So uh, just about playing our baseball and uh, staying true to what we know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, very good team. You know, I have a total respect for them. You know, great program. Definitely know how to win. So, uh, you know, we got to play our best baseball uh, for this game. Um, you know, great pitching staff. You know, we, uh, we saw them early in the year. So kind of have an idea uh, going into this game. Um, but, yeah, like I said, uh, Got to play our base, best baseball right now, so, yeah. You know. Okay, Michael, you had a question. For both guys, again, if we could start with Dylan. Um, obviously, Skeens won the DeCauser today. Just, I, I wonder, what do you appreciate most about him? I imagine it's probably different, you know, being in different parts in your career. Yeah, I mean, he's had a tremendous impact on my career. You know, just the way he goes about himself every single day, you know, his, his preparation, um, you know, from the first day he walked into the locker room, he's been the same ever since uh, up to this point. And um, that's what I respect about him. You know, he uh, goes about himself like a big leader does, and if not, probably way better. So um, I've definitely taken note to that and, um, you know, just try to almost imitate him in every way possible, you know, because he's uh, had a lot of success this year. Yeah, true. Yeah, I think with Paul, you know, he's helped me out, I think, probably more than he knows. Uh, you know, I live with him and, we talk all the time about baseball mindset, and um, I just try to learn from him every day. It's it's really special to be around him. Same with Dylan, you know, right next to him in the locker, and then I live with Paul. So uh, I'm just super thankful I've got to share the field with those guys all year, and it's it's special. Just trying to soak it in, you know. Okay, once again here, Matt. Yeah, Matt Talbany from World Baseball Network. Uh, Dylan, how does it feel? to just not just be in Omaha. You're one of the three finalists right now for the Golden Spikes Award, even what lies ahead towards the middle of July. Um, what are you just looking forward to taking the field on Friday night? Man, it, uh, it's, uh, it's a, something that I've wanted since I was a you know freshman walking into the locker room, and it's just something that I've thought about every single day leading up to this point. You know, I want to go here and experience all this, being able to play baseball or a playoff baseball, you know, at the box was something, but being able to play here is, is something else. You know, the the crowds are going to double, triple. Uh, atmosphere is going to be electric. You know, being able to play here is pretty awesome. So, um, you know, and then you know, Golden Spice thing, it's uh, it's awesome. You know, um, but we got a job here to do, and um, yeah, that's the only thing on my mind right now. Okay, right here. Yeah, uh, this could be for, for Dylan and Who's also. Your name and oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Glenn West with Go247. This could be for a coach and for Dylan. You know, We're kind going of with the players first. Oh, players? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Uh, Dylan, just could you talk about, I guess, the. Seems like a common theme this year has been guys accepting their roles and thriving in those <laughs> environments. Uh, Thatcher's a great example. Josh Pearson. Um, just could you talk about the, the willingness of, these te of this team and just guys being able to adapt to their roles pretty consistently? Yeah, I think it all starts with the older guys, really. You know, um, you know, some of our older guys didn't start early in the year, so um, having them being able to come in and produce the way they did really just kind of, you know, moved on to the to the younger guys, and they've done a tremendous job. You know, like Pearson and um, you know Paxton sometimes, and then you know just other guys really. At any point, I mean, I have faith in all the guys, and everybody else does. So um, 
it doesn't matter who you are at any moment, any spot in the lineup. I think they're going to do a good job and staying present, staying locked in, and you know producing. Okay, Brandon. Brendan Prizman, Omaha World Herald. This one is for both the players. Uh, LSU all year has been very good at a whole ton of things. The team's borderline top 10 in walks and hits per inning. They're a fantastic hitting team. I believe you guys lead the nation in hits. So Dylan as a hitter and then Thatcher as a pitcher, what does it mean to you guys that the other side of the ball is always constantly able to produce and give you some support? Yeah, it's it's awesome. You know, um, it's, it's, it's a good feeling when... You know the pitchers are doing their job and getting uh, flipping the lineup over. You know, or flipping to the other side to have the lineup do do what it does best. You know, just just going up there and hit hitting. You know, we have a we have a great offensive approach each and every day. You know, sticking to our plans is, you know, just commanding the the, uh, the line of scrimmage in baseball is what we call it. Um, I think if we do that, good things will happen for both sides of the for both sides of the you know playing field. Thatcher, yeah, I think um, you know just like you know both sides of the ball. Um, Picking each other up, I think that's a huge component of our team. Um, you know, I, I know when I get the ball or anyone else gets the ball that, or, you know, we're going to score. And, uh, you know, as a staff, we're just looking to pick up the offense if, you know, maybe to put up a zero that inning. But uh, I think that's just a, a huge component of our team. Okay, here in the middle, here in the back. Hello, Leah Van, Baton Rouge advocate. Um, Dylan, I know that um, hitting in this ballpark, it's a little different here. The foul territory is bigger, and I'm just wondering, like, how that adjusts, like, your game plan as a hitter. As a hitter, yeah. I mean, really just sticks to, you know, stays the same, really, sticking to the approach. You know, yeah, foul territory gets a little bit bigger, but um, the field stays the same, really. So we just stick to our approach, really. I think everything will kind of just take care of itself. Um yeah, just middle approach, command in the strike zone. Um, good things will happen to both sides of the, of the ball. Okay, Michael. Dylan, your answer to my uh, Skeens question kind of just triggered something. Did you feel like you had a partner in crime when he showed up on campus, somebody else that could kind of shoulder the burden along with you as, as the face of this program? Yeah, I mean, um, I didn't really view myself as, like, the face of the program. You know, just kind of doing my thing every day. Um, but yeah, just having somebody to kind of just lead the team, you know, not just on the hitter side, but like on the pitching side too. Having somebody, because like you know, last year we had that we had older guys being able to kind of be the role model, the leaders of the team, and um, that uh, Paul has really stepped up in in being able to kind of be the leader for the for the, for the younger guys, and it's been tremendous. You know, guys have been looking up to him and and kind of following him and seeing how the way he goes about himself. So it's been good. Another from Leanne. Thatcher, I know when you first came here, you wanted the number 25, and then you saw that Hayden Travinsky had it. Um, can you talk, can you say me, like, how did your relationship with him start, and what is it like now? Yeah, I love Hayden. Uh, he, he was one of the first guys I met. I, when I came here, I didn't know anyone, and uh, he was one, one of the first guys I met. You know, we'd go out and get food together and hang out, and uh, it just felt really cool, like, to be welcomed by him, and... Um, you know he's he, he's such a great clubhouse guy and he's he's a leader and uh, you know to see to see what he does on the field every day is uh, couldn't be happy for him and no one no one deserves it more considering you know the adversity he's gone through and and you know just persistence and doing what he does so I love that guy. Okay, any more questions for the players, Michael? This will be our last. <laughs> Plugged us into Outback, and then I saw a bunch of pictures. It's a bunch of you guys, I guess, that go, or different groups of guys that go. Uh, what does that do as far as you know, team bonding? Is there are there other places that everybody kind of goes and, and groups up and, and kind of shares a meal together? Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of the most fun part of college and being on a team. I think is going out to eat and, and hanging out. And uh, yeah, we, we I mean we love each other. We love to hang out, and uh, you know we go out to eat. It's kind of the pitchers, and you know it's just a lot of fun. Uh, not really. We kind of just like uh, we're always around each other, you know, every day at the field. So um, I don't know. We used to do that a lot in the fall. Really, we used to go out to the uh, nutrition center, all of us, the whole team, and um, just have team dinners, team lunches, whatever it was. Um, I think that helps a lot. I think that's why we're so close and why we gel so good. So it's been great. 
I go to Mike Anderson's every night. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, guys. You're excused. Right. And we'll have, open it up here for questions for the for the coach here in a second. As their hands have blown up. <clears throat> thanks, man. We'll see you tomorrow. See you Saturday. Okay. Okay. Let's start. We'll start with Joe here. Jay, it's you know been a few years since this program has been back here. How much does it speak to kind of the expectations in Baton Rouge for this program that, it, though it's been a few years, it kind of gets talked about like it's it's been ages since since you guys have been back here. You know, I never really thought of it in terms of how long it had been for LSU. I, this is my favorite place in the world, uh, and this program has had as good a history as any program in college baseball of, of being here. I think um, in accepting the job, I really wanted this group of players to play here. I mean, you know, the guy sitting to my left, he was part of me deciding to come here to get an opportunity to coach him at LSU for two years. And uh, they've done everything that we've asked them to do for 700 plus days. And, you know, when we took the field um, last weekend, there was just a really solid peace of mind that these guys were going to do it. And um, to see the fans get behind them, they're going to get behind LSU no matter what. But this is a really easy group to get behind, how hard they play, how much they care, how invested they are in the program. And, um, you know, that's kind of more where my thoughts were. Okay, let's go to the other side here. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you a couple of things. Um, first off, I think last week you said you can't control your performance unless you control yourself. And I wonder how much that applies to you because your players say that you are not a, a shouter and a screamer uh, when you coach them. And you, you're pretty much level with them. Well, I think in leadership um, you can talk about it the way you want them to, to do it or you can – talk about it and you can try to show them and um, certainly not perfect in that regard. And, you know, like I'll use Thatcher as an example, his competitiveness is his best quality. And a lot of our conversations are never turning your best quality against you. And that's one I can relate to. And as a younger coach, maybe get a little more uh, overly intense for lack of a better word. But as I, I've grown in this, this role and in, in leadership, uh, I've always believed it's better to show them the way than to tell them the way, and you get more buy-in when you tell them if you show it to them. And when you were growing up, when did football, uh, excuse me, baseball really <laughs> hook you? And and <laughs> when did you become just so in love with the sport? And do you have any, like, humorous thoughts, your family, friends, hey, Jay, let's go do this, oh, he's watching baseball, or, he, you know. He's yeah, saying, I mean, relative to, like, Omaha and the College World Series, I grew up in a small town, and, and playing Major League Baseball might as well have been going to the moon, you know what I mean? But, you know, when you watch the College World Series, whether it was LSU, Texas, Stanford, like that kind of seemed like a realistic goal. And so that was probably the first thought. I mean, football is my first love, no question about that. Um, but I realized really quickly, very good high school player. There wasn't many five foot seven, 165 pound running backs running around the SEC or the Pac-12 or that sort of thing. So it was just this is the way it was going to be. And, you know, got to play college baseball and then, you know, becoming a coach was really the only option you know I'm, I'm addicted to winning I'm addicted to um, developing programs and helping players achieve their goals and um, it was just the route that it was going to be and you know it's really awesome to be able to do it at, at LSU I mean because I view our university our program is, is the pinnacle of the sport okay Leanne okay then we'll get I don't care either way <laughs> <laughs> We'll get you. Sam. Hey, Jay, Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Uh, welcome back to the Cultural Series. Okay, so when you're recruiting Paul, or he's in, well, he's in the transfer portal and he's coming from Air Force, you know, his fastball is what, 93, 94 miles an hour when he was there against Mountain West competition. How did his fastball jump the way that it did, uh, well, five miles an hour upward? And how has he been able to be even better against better competition this year? It's a great question. I think uh, there's a lot of value in simplicity, I think. And he, he's a great two-way player. I mean, this dude was launching home runs in fall baseball. I mean, as impressive as it gets. Um, and, and he definitely could make an impact. Had I just made him a position player, he would have 20 home runs right now and potentially be hitting fifth or sixth for our team. Well, um, we had a really deliberate plan on the pitching side of it. Uh, we got him started uh, right when he got to campus 
uh, with Coach Wes Johnson uh, to develop his slider. There were some things that we needed to do. And so we started to do that um, early. We shut him down earlier in the fall to give him more ramp up time for the season. And then, you know, it wasn't intentional, but I think kind of removing the two-way player thing, I started to see uh, his ability to recover physically better. And you're minimizing the rotations because the rotation of a pitching delivery, rotation of a hitting swing, he's right-handed in both. It's very similar. And so I feel like last year he was catching. <laughs> he was swinging a bat. He was running the bases. He was potentially playing first base at times. And then also, you know, going six or seven innings in a league that's not very easy to pitch in. And I know that firsthand. So I think kind of the simplicity of it, and then you take someone that is so driven, that is so disciplined, and get them on track with one thing. What does Friday to Friday look like? And then he's absolutely mastered that. So when you're talking about recovery, when you're talking about development, velocity improvement, improving his secondary pitches, he's been able to go all in on those things. And uh, I think that's probably the reasoning. Yeah. Um, this is kind of more of an off the field question, but this team has a lot of like goofiness to it, like the Hayden Travinsky shirt, the Jobu statue. Um, you know, are the as a coach, like what's it like to kind of see these fun things that kind of bring your team together? And I, I was talking to Hayden, he said that he thinks like more successful teams have goofy clubhouses. Yeah, I won't take uh, any uh, credit for the goofiness, that's for sure. Um, now, I really want players to be themselves, but to become a team. And I think um, that's been a big part of why I think this has worked, is um, there was talented players here um, that were going to be coming into their own, that we tried to give them a development template. But to, for them to develop, they have to be at the field. And for them to develop as a team, they have to be together. So part of that, they have to take ownership in. And so if you let them be themselves, obviously within reason with, you know, class and character and all those types of things, I've always just found the buy-in goes up tremendously. Um, yeah, so as far as Travinsky T-shirts and all that, it's like, I mean, what? <laughs> we're good. Like, they, they could just, as long as it's appropriate, I'm good with it. <laughs> hey, Glenn. Uh, Glenn West, 247. I, I wonder if you can expand on um, when I asked Dylan earlier just about Dylan, uh, or team, your team being able to kind of adapt different roles. I mean, Gavin Guidry was probably looking at infield and then certainly was a pitcher. Trey was in left field a good part of the year. Could you just speak on that mentality as a whole from the players? And then is there a particular player that maybe at the beginning of the year you thought had a role and then has kind of evolved into a different one for you guys that you're really proud of? Yeah, I, I'm very proud of all of that. I mean, we have a saying that, you know, I will always place the needs of the team above my own. And going into August when they were all going to show up, you know, a lot was made of the returning players, and rightfully so. Dylan's coming back. Trey Morgan is coming back. Jordan Thompson is coming back. So we had a nice core to start out with that, that had some successful playing experience. They won 40 games and finished in the top four in the SEC last year. Then you had this high school recruiting class, number one class in the country, you know, Paxton Kling, Chase Shores, Jared Jones, Brady Neal, uh, Gavin Guidry, all these guys that are – going to carry the torch of this thing, you know, after this year is over. Well, then you go in the transfer portal and it's Paul Skeens, Tommy White, Thatcher Hurd, Christian Little, Ben Napolt. So that's a, a, an amazing collection of talent. But in the first meeting, I said that doesn't make us a team. And so developing them as people, developing them as teammates, not just accepting their role, but embracing it and communicating it might look different in game one than game 10. It might look different in game 20, game 50, and then in Omaha. And that's been the case. Um, and there's so many good examples of that. Cade Beloso was probably in line to get a bunch more at-bats early, but Tommy hurt his shoulder. So he couldn't play defense for a number of games. So that really pinched him into the DH role. Cade kind of got pushed out a little bit. You know, Hayden Travinsky didn't have a lot of at-bats the first 25, 30 games of the year. There's not a better hitter in college baseball right now than him. Um, Josh Pearson, you know, was a starter all year last year. 
kind of got beat out at the beginning of the year, yet when it's been winning time, that's the guy I want in the box. And so they've all been ready to make their contribution because they made it about the team instead of themselves. And I can't speak higher about that because I think it's incredibly uncommon nowadays. Okay, right back here. Hey, Jay, you talked before, of course, about Paul Skeen's impact on this team. The way that younger players have been able to now watch him over the last year, do you think, even though he's only here for 11 months or so, that there's going to be a lasting effect on this program because he was in it at some point? Yes, and I, I would say the exact same thing for Dylan. And there was a, this happened within a week's time. You know, we were, I had both of them in my office about different things, and the comment came up from both of them is like, hey, what can we help you do to keep pushing this forward? Like, what's happening right now? And it was right around the middle beginning of the SEC. We just won at Texas A&M, just beaten Arkansas, just beaten Tennessee, going through that meat grinder of a schedule. And I'm thinking about these guys have their entire life in front of them. You know, they're going to make a lot of money. They're going to play in the major leagues, be all-stars, you know, win batting title, Cy Young, potential Hall of Famers. Like, that's what's, that's what's in front of them. And yet their mind is wrapped around this when they're not going to be here. And they are the best examples of that. And so the fact that they even had awareness to bring it up, there's no question about it. I don't think there's another – Paul Skeens in our locker room. And I don't want anybody to try to be Paul Skeens, but I want them to take the things that he has shown and then emulate them the best way that they can to pay forward that contribution that they got from him. And I think that's totally going to happen. Okay, we'll go back here with me, Ann. Um, now with like kind of a whole year with the strength coach almost, um, Derek Groomer, how is his style of training different from maybe what this team had before? And, you know, what have you seen specifically out of him that has impacted the players this year? Yeah, he's very knowledgeable. And so that created buy-in immediately. Uh, he's very detailed. And the individual planning per player, I think, is the hook. Because, and it's it's applicability to what we need them to do on the field whether it's an infielder being able to play lower is that a lower half strength issue is it a hip mobility issue hey Derek this is what we need this guy to be able to do and then to write the program of what they're doing in the weight room to get it and to get the player there um, he's exceptional at that and so I think his ability to get buy-in from the player and then execute a plan that's going to translate on the field to baseball is, is where he's made the biggest impact. Okay, uh, let's go over here with uh, Jake. Jake McKeever, College Baseball Central. Coach, you had some bullpen issues in the middle of the season. Who's kind of stepped up for that role as tournament play has gone on? Yeah, I think um, following the SEC tournament, um, the regional, the super regional, the last regular season weekend at Georgia, those guys have been outstanding. And I think um, there's a number of guys that have made a positive contribution, you know, to the point where I really don't want to leave anybody out. Um, we had a lightning delay in game two or the winner's bracket game of the regional. And Thatcher came in and, and gave us five innings from the fourth to the eighth. He's not I don't look at him necessarily as a bullpen guy, but, you know, closed out a couple really big SEC wins. And that five innings, 13 strikeout performance against Oregon State is as good as you could do. Right behind him is Gavin Guidry, and, and for me, he's, he's kind of the star of the show with that. I mean, he's a freshman. Uh, he was a two-way player, but his poise, his confidence, his ability to block out what's going on around him and execute uh, is second to none. And then we've really, really leaned on Riley Cooper, though he started game three of the regional. Um, you know, he came in in a you know, high-leverage situation last week in the Super Regional and, and got us three really good innings. And, um, you know, I would guess in the last three years, there's not too many people with multiple super regional wins under their belt. Riley, Riley's done that. And then Gavin came in to close it out again. And there's guys kind of just waiting in the wings that I think are in a really good spot, too, whether it be uh, Javen Coleman. You know, Blake Money got us an inning and a third in, in the super regional last week. Um, you know, Nate Ackenhausen, a huge, huge piece of our team. You know, when he pitches, we win, you know, typically. And I think... Um, you know, you could call it struggle. I would just call it like life in the SEC. I mean, nobody played a schedule like we did. And, and it wasn't going to be perfect, no matter how good these guys are. I'm just proud of them for adjusting their preparation, 
getting through that difficulty and just getting back to executing. Okay, Michael, this will be our last question. Just the guys mentioned that uh, post-SEC tournament meeting, I guess. What, what, thematically, what would you say was the, the nugget that everybody got out of it pushing forward? You know, we just we just needed a little bit of a reset. And um, I intentionally did not uh, come down on them or crush them, you know, when we lost back-to-back series because I trusted the, the talent enough. I trusted the work enough. I trusted the approach enough. I looked at it as, hey, Auburn is a national seed. I mean, and we're on the road, and we were ahead in one of those games. If one inning goes a little bit different, we win that series too. And then, uh, you know, we had that tough loss against Mississippi State. Well, on Saturday of that game, we were ahead in the eighth inning also. Obviously had the big bullpen lead. And I think it was just it was a good time to reset, uh, address, and, you know, it's a very simplistic message, you know, Right head, right heart, we're five wins away from the College World Series. Right head, right heart, we're five wins from there from a national championship. We absolutely can do this. Let's get back in the preparation. Let's get back in character, and we're going for it. I mean, it was as simple as that. Okay, Jay, thank you. We'll see you Saturday night.